So this is the CH47 F model Chinook. It is a heavy to medium lift helicopter, tandem rotor, made in Pennsylvania. So my role when flying on the aircraft is obstacle clearance. The pilots have a very large aircraft behind them that they can't see very easily. So when they're hovering and making turns or positioning or maneuvering in an area, they need to be able to see what's behind them, next to them and around them. So that's where we provide those eyes uh, for them to do that. We also handle the passengers and the cargo that we take. So marshalling passengers on or off, making sure that their cargo is secured, when they get off, they're ready to get off. We also provide all of the external and internal loads or support for those, whether it's hanging beneath the aircraft, we're calling those loads, or if it's putting in, in the aircraft, uh, we're securing it that way. I'd say the most unique thing about the CH-47 is the versatility that provides the ground force and army commanders on the battlefield for getting the mission done. Uh, as you can see, it's the largest of the aircraft in the fleet. It has the most power, but with the certain mission requirements that we have, we can fit an entire infantry platoon in the back. We can sling load artillery pieces, boats, cargo, anything. We can maximize combat firepower in one space at one time with the power to do it and the range to do it and the speed to do it. So the water bucket mission, it's mainly in support of uh, domestic operations uh, for assisting the forest service in fighting forest fires. So we can actually lift about 17,000 pounds of water in the uh, current bucket that we use. And we can put that wherever they need us to, uh, to drop that water in case there's a forest fire to contain it. Two turbine engines that generate uh, upwards of 10,000 horsepower between the two of them, which provides us the predominant lifting force of the aircraft. We have six rotor blades uh, between the front and the aft rotor heads uh, and that helps us provide all of our lift. You can see that they're quite large. They're about 33 feet long and they each weigh at or around 350 pounds. Uh, we have six fuel tanks on this model. We hold approximately a thousand gallons of fuel, a little bit more than that, which is roughly around 62 or 6300 pounds of avgas. Uh, and those six tanks are located three on each side of the aircraft. And this aircraft as well is equipped with an internal tank, which you'll see uh, in a few minutes. So we have landing gear on the, on the bottom, four up front, two in the rear. We're at power steering. It's a, it's a pretty nice feature to have on an aircraft this size. You can equip skis into the areas that have more snow about them uh, and allows you to go into more environments as well. Uh, previous models of the Chinook were actually capable of doing water landings, so they could land in the water, hover for about 30-40 minutes while they conducted amphibious operations. Back entrance there, you saw forward entrance up here. This is where one of the crew chiefs will sit during the flight. We can sit crew chief up here, another one on the other side, and then typically in a mission set overseas, we'll have another guy on the ramp as well. Both of these two will operate firearms. They'll have machine guns that are mounted halfway through the door there, and that provides us some defensive cover. From this angle, you can see underneath the aircraft, we have our three external hooks that allow us to do either a three hook setup, a one hook setup, or what we call a tandem hook, which is just the front and the aft hooks uh, to carry external loads. Usually somewhere at max out between 18 and 20,000 pounds for those uh, external loads. I get asked a lot about this antenna. This is not where the paratroopers come out and hang their stuff. This is just an antenna for the uh, UHF radio. Uh, Parajumpers always go out the back in a nice big hole opening in the back there. Moving further back, uh, a lot of people ask why we have one window that pops outward, and that's so the crew chief, myself, can stick our head out here and we can look out further or farther forward. We can look backwards, we can see the engine and look at its condition based off of that, but that's a pretty typical question. Uh, okay, I'm gonna walk you through the, uh, the inside of the CH-47, which is really, uh, Sergeant Andrews talked to you about the, uh, the cargo hooks. Um, we're gonna move inside into the cargo bay, which is another area that provides this aircraft some versatility. So we'll just start here with the cargo ramp. We can load cargo on the ramp as well. 
However, what we can also do is we can mount one of our three M240 machine guns right here on the Stinger to provide a six o'clock security uh, for any of those combat assault missions or hostile areas that we do. We can also have two M240 machine guns right up behind the cockpit in what we call right and left gun positions. And I'll show you those as we go along. So uh, the ramp, we can load cargo on the ramp. And just a, a little overview, as you can see, it's, it's pretty much a, it's, it's a rather large capacity as a, compared to other Army aircraft. Um, and if it fits, it ships. If we have the power to pick it up and it can fit into this cargo bay, we can ship it to any type of ground force commander on the ground. Uh, some of the things that we uh, specialize in, we, uh, we have a static line system where we can deliver both uh, low cost, low altitude or airborne resupply. And we can also infiltrate paratroopers that way as well for airborne operations. That static line can also be used as a cargo wench to draw some of our heavier stuff to bring it up into the cargo bay. And we can also use it in some emergencies as a hoist recovery for any type of CASAVAC missions or any type of uh, rescue missions in support of state and local uh, authorities as well. So without further ado, we'll kind of come up into the, uh, the cargo compartment. This is the primary entrance and exit of the aircraft. Uh, I know that ground forces, as a former ground guy myself, I really liked this because it was uh, it was about the easiest way to get on or off the aircraft. Typically when we do that, that's when our, our uh, crew chiefs in the back, they count, make sure we have accountability for everybody. But it makes it for uh, ease of use for ground forces to ingress and egress the aircraft. As we move on, you see that we do have seats on the side. We have up to uh, 33 troop seats, and then we have one commander seat up front, which I will show you. So this is uh, real easy to get to. As you run on, you can just kind of bunch up, load from front of the aircraft to the rear, and then you strap in and we have those seats. This is where we can actually hook up a sling load with one of our uh, crew chiefs or flight engineers in the back. He can go down here and that's the center hook of one of our three hooks. Uh, we've also used this in the past for uh, you know, all kinds of things, emergency egress, hoist, uh, certain types of infiltrations, exfiltrations, things like of that nature. Essentially from, you see this red line on the floor, essentially from their back is what we call the customer. That is his area that was where we can load his stuff based on whatever his intent for the mission is. You notice the cockpit now. Like I said, this is the Fox model cockpit. If you look up front, we have those five computer screens. We call those multifunction displays or MFDs. What they allow us to do up front is we have our standard aircraft instrumentation on those. Also, we have the uh, our our condition system, so we can know like well what temperature my engines are running at. Um, what pressures the oil is at. So our, our standard uh, our standard aircraft yeah, instrumentation. Yeah, it's a little hazy, maybe a little rain, but. So a lot of stuff going on up in that cockpit. It gets, uh, it gets pretty busy at times, depending on the mission that you're on. 